Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. A recent video I did on the newest Russian meteor weather satellite got ridiculously popular on YouTube. So I'm doing a quick follow-up video, which I'm sure will get like four views. Um, I wanted to answer a few questions people had and clear up a couple mistakes I made in the first video. First off, I wanted to make a correction about the fate of some of the prior Meteor M2 satellites. The one that I filmed a couple years ago, Meteor M2-2, I kind of conjectured on what had happened to it in the prior video. I had seen some kind of rumors on Reddit and speculation online about what had happened to it, and I never really followed up. Someone emailed me and said that it seems to have had an impact event, either a micrometeorite or a piece of space junk, hit the satellite and disabled the uh, low-rate picture transmission system, or at least damaged something to some extent that Roscosmos turned off that low-rate picture transmission. That's what I use, that's what the radio amateurs can use to get signals from that satellite, to get images from that satellite. It does have other transmission modes, it has other instruments on board, so even though people like me can't necessarily get the information off of it, it is still partially functional and it is still being used by Russia for weather information. Now the second thing I said that might not be completely correct is the visibility of the curvature of the Earth from the orbital altitude of that Meteor M2 satellite. I'm sure this will stir up all the flat Earth trolls, but that Russian Meteor satellite, uh, just like the US NOAA satellites, isn't using a traditional camera to take its images. It's using something more like a scanner. If you're familiar with a regular old document scanner, you'll see that line of light running down the page of your document. That's kind of what the NOAA satellites and the Meteor satellites are using. They're not actually taking a picture, they're scanning a line as they fly over and they're transmitting that pretty much in real time so when I'm receiving a signal I'm actually getting line by line the live view of what that satellite is seeing. Now that scanner sees a pretty wide range and it's actually looking a little bit off to the sides it's not just looking straight down so to some extent you are seeing some lens distortion for areas of the image that are way off to the side of the satellite I pulled out a globe here to kind of illustrate where the satellite is and what things it can see um, not everybody understands the difference between low orbit satellites polar orbit satellites geosynchronous satellites there are a lot of different orbits that you can put stuff in around the earth a couple people asked in the comments why is Russia sending satellites over the US well, almost all low Earth orbits are going to pass over most of the Earth. Space is neutral territory and nobody's going to shoot down each other's weather satellites or even spy satellites. There are plenty of treaties about that and if we all started shooting down each other's satellites, the debris cloud from that would eventually grow so large that it would take out everything else in low Earth orbit and we'd have a real problem. Anyway, if we look at the globe here, that Russian meteor weather satellite is orbiting approximately 500 miles in altitude. Now. We can look at our scale here and we notice that 500 miles, at least on the surface of the globe, is about the same as the height of this little push pin here. So if I stick the push pin on the globe like this, the top of it is about a 500 mile polar orbiting altitude and the satellite is going around in a polar orbit so it's going north to south and it's also a sun synchronous orbit. So I'll grab a floor lamp here. So if the sun is over there, and the Earth is rotating. So the satellite is going around in this direction and actually it's set up more like this so that it can see most of the daylight side of the Earth. It comes across in my area around 9 or 10 a.m. and then 9 or 10 p.m. Anyway, from that altitude you definitely can see a little bit of curvature off to the sides. I showed the example of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. I don't think I can get the camera close enough to show what those look like on a, a globe like this, but we can pull it up on Google Earth. Okay, a couple other questions from the last video. A very frequent comment, is this legal? Yes, it's legal. Um, maybe not in places like North Korea, but in the US, in Russia, in most of the world, yeah, this is perfectly legal. A related question is, why aren't these satellites encrypted? And these are intended to be used by the public, or at least people with limited technical experience and abilities, like me. One use that I've mentioned a few times in the comments are ships out at sea. If you've got a Russian cargo ship somewhere in the world that doesn't necessarily have local weather radio and can't necessarily pick up a weather radio broadcast or an internet connection, this satellite sending down real-time live pictures of the current weather situations can be a great way for the ship's crew to see are there any storms in the area, where are the clouds, 
what do weather conditions look like? Do we need to change our course? Do we need to take other precautions? To some extent, yes, that's a little bit obsolete because we do have satellite internet. We have more options for ship captains, for remote scientific outposts, for hikers, for people out off-grid to get updated weather information. Uh, a lot of these satellites are left over from the Soviet era. They were designed during the Cold War, they were designed back before reliable internet, before cell phones, but they are still somewhat useful for folks who are out off-grid, out of communication range, who need a quick updated weather forecast. As I've mentioned, the U.S. has very similar satellites. The NOAA Polar Orbiting Series, NOAA 15, 18, and 19 are the currently active ones do almost the same thing as this Russian meteor satellite. They're in very similar orbits, they use very similar frequencies, and they have very similar instruments and imagers on board. I actually heard from the developer of the SatDump software, who apparently got a little bump in traffic after my video got a bump in traffic, so that's cool. Um, he suggested some other things I could try to get better reception, so I'm going to try some of those. And he did also mention that the satellite had an issue with the QFH antenna. The satellite itself uses an antenna very similar to the one I'm using up on my roof. So it's sending down that 137 megahertz signal with that spiral helix antenna, the same as what I have, although I assume theirs isn't made out of plumbing scrap. Now apparently that antenna did not fully deploy after the satellite was launched, so it's not sending down a completely clear signal and it's kind of aimed offset a little bit. It's not aimed directly down the way it's supposed to. So that might help explain why the images I was getting in the prior video were so patchy and had so many dead bands in them. Now the fellow who does sat dump also suggested some other ways I could use it. Um, he did mention that he had updated it since I did the prior video, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try again. So he suggested setting up this SDR++ server on the Raspberry Pi and then connecting to that with SatDump from my other computer. Yeah, I am not having any luck getting these libraries and prerequisites installed for SDR++. This is taking so long that we might just miss this next pass of Meteor M23. Uh, it's coming up in about five to ten minutes here and we are only three percent through compiling sat dumps. That's what happens when you use a surplus cop car computer from 2007 as your cyberdeck. Okay, since I could not get any of that other stuff to work, I last minute half-assed an RTL TCP command together, uh, aimed sat dump from my other Linux computer at that TCP stream, and we're gonna see if this works. All right, so we actually got something out of that pass uh, using RTL TCP to stream the uh, radio signals over to our other computer and running sat dump. Let's try something a little sillier. We've got our fold up C-band satellite dish here. I'm actually gonna swap out the C-band LNB for a 1.7 gigahertz feed horn. And that's what I've used for the geostationary GOES satellite in the past, but the Meteor satellite also transmits on that 1.7 gigahertz and that's supposedly a higher resolution picture. The only downside is we're gonna have to set this dish up and then manually move it to keep it pointed at the Meteor satellite because I don't have a dish rotor that can handle something this big. And the folding mechanism on this uses these dang little roll pins that are just constantly falling out and vanishing. We have our tin can LNB feed horn situation duct taped onto the C band LNB because uh, they actually kind of fit together and duct tape held them together. I've got the center arm pushed out about the same amount as the length of this can so that this is still in the focal point. Then from the uh, feed horn, we have our sobered goes LNA here. So that's uh, amplifying and filtering to the 1.7 gigahertz signal. We're powering that with a USB battery bank because we've got quite a long cable here going back to the cyber deck and I forgot how to enable the bias T on the RTL SDR that's in there. Um, the cyber deck is starting to actually fall apart a little bit because they've been banging it around out here. It's, it's hot, everything's kind of melting, the computer's overheating, so generally uh, just a giant mess as usual. So I can't easily track this up and down in elevation, but I can do the azimuth pretty easily. The dish just rotates, and in fact, I'm having trouble with the wind out here. It's blowing the dish around. I'm also gonna be aimed right at this tree during kind of the highest point of the pass, so that's not helping either. So I'm having a lot more trouble picking up those higher resolution signals. 
They're definitely trickier to pick up than the low rate picture transmission, the standard 137 megahertz VHF signals. These microwave signals, 1.7 gigahertz signals are definitely more challenging. As you can see, even with the giant satellite dish, I'm not getting much out of it. I'm not 100% sure about my feed horn. Somebody actually contacted me today asking to verify the measurements on the feed horn I did with the GOES geostationary satellite. And I realized I had mixed some numbers between two different Cantenna calculators. So it's possible the Cantenna I'm using isn't quite optimized. Also, I think the signal is a circular polarization versus linear polarization. My Cantenna is linear. I should be using something like a little tiny uh, QFH helix spiral antenna. So I set up a timed job on my Raspberry Pi last night to record the evening pass. And this was around 10 o'clock at night. It's actually better quality. There are fewer uh, black bars of no data. It's really hard to tell though because most of the image is dark. And this satellite has not yet switched on its nighttime thermal imager. Apparently there's some component on the satellite that has to cool down to a baseline temperature before they can switch on that thermal imaging. I don't quite know, but for whatever reason it's stuck in daytime mode and daytime mode doesn't show anything when it's dark on the ground. So I was poking around downstairs in my satellite junk and found this thing, which is a miniature QFH antenna for L-band, 1.6 to 1.7 gigahertz. So that's exactly what I need. I got this thing for $6 on eBay a year or two ago and just forgot I had it. There are no instructions, nothing about how to use this. Uh, other than some photos on the eBay listing and those photos show it in right-hand circular polarization With the wires going in a way that you get right-handed signals from space since we're using a reflector uh, We're going to be bouncing the signals off of the satellite dish onto this So we actually want to invert that and have it be left-hand polarization now I'm terrible at soldering, but we're gonna give this a shot anyway and since there are supposed to be four wires on this it doesn't give us any links. I'm just going to assume I had cut this wire into four pieces. All right, well, this thing looks terrible. Um, I'm not sure about my soldering job. I'm not sure about my wiring links. This was an incredible hassle to solder, to get everything aligned, to get it in there, and it, it still looks like hot garbage. I cannot possibly recommend these kits. These are, for $6, this is a waste of $6. I'm going to try it anyway, but I don't expect much from it. When there's this much duct tape, you know it's legit. On this track, the satellite is passing almost directly overhead, so we won't have to move the dish side to side at all, but we'll have to move it in the vertical plane, the elevation. I'm just going to set it up aiming right down the track of Meteor M23, and then since I don't have a good elevation mechanism on this dish, I'm just going to tip the entire thing backwards. So. As the satellite passes overhead, I'm just going to sit there and try to keep the dish aimed at it the entire time. I hardly even have this set up and it is already working great. Look at that nice signal right in the middle. As the satellite passed directly overhead, the signal actually dropped completely. So I think the antenna is aimed a little bit forward, or at least that HRPT antenna is. So in the first half of the orbital pass, I get the signal really well starting all the way from the horizon. But as soon as it goes overhead, it drops out completely. I tried tilting the dish a little more that way, but still nothing. So yeah, I think we can only get the first half of the pass on HRPT as the thing approaches us. I was surprised to see that I actually got a good signal from Meteor M23 on that hacked together, stupid little $6 QFH that looks like it was put together by an over-caffeinated gorilla. It actually kind of worked. After I badmouthed it a lot, I got a decent signal from it. Or at least it was better than the other antenna elements I tried. I'm sure I could get a better signal with a little more tweaking. And again, if I ever get around to that motorized tracking mount for the dish, which I've been talking about for years and just dragging my feet on actually putting anything together, that would really improve uh, tracking some of these low Earth orbit satellites like Meteor, NOAA, other stuff that moves across the sky in a 10-15 minute window. If I had an automatic tracking system, I could probably get a more stable signal and I wouldn't have to be out there just manually moving the dish around. Unfortunately, I screwed up on that recording somehow, so I cannot get it to decode or demodulate. I've thrown it into sat dump, I've thrown it into lean demod, and it just crashes those programs. So they are not able to handle the recording I did. I screwed up somewhere, I used the wrong bit rate or I used the wrong symbol rate or something. I still don't understand 
all of the parameters that I put into those recordings, and I still don't understand all the parameters that Sat Dump wants. Speaking of Sat Dump, I did record that exact same pass on VHF 137 megahertz using the big QFH antenna upstairs. Interestingly enough, I got a little sliver right as the satellite passed over the horizon up north. I got a little sliver of Greenland or northern Canada. It's really hard to tell what I'm looking at. Then there was a huge dark area with no signal. Then I got a signal again over Hudson's Bay, over the Great Lakes, and then similar to the HRPT signal with the dish, that LRPT signal, the VHF signal cut out as the satellite passed overhead. So again, I think at least one of the antennas is aiming forward as the satellite moves towards me, and that's why I got that little blip of signal from right at the horizon. I don't know if Roscosmos is going to be able to fix that antenna. I don't know if they can retract it and extend it again, or once it's out, it's just there forever. So just like its predecessor, this satellite kind of works for now. Uh, we'll see how long it stays working, if it runs into something, if it has some other issues. But it's definitely possible to get data off of it, both in that 137 megahertz and in that 1.7 gigahertz range. You just need a slightly different antenna for each application. I should note, if I didn't earlier in the video, the VHF signal, the LRPT signal, is now on 137.1 megahertz. In my last video, it was on 137.9, but apparently they've switched that over. I don't know if that was to avoid interference with other things, or if they were getting a better signal on 137.1. The HRPT signal that I was getting with the DISH is still on 1694 megahertz. Another common question I get when I'm doing these videos is, what's the point? Why do I go to the trouble of downloading satellite information when I can just go on the internet, pull up my cell phone, get the weather forecast, I can look at all these pictures online, I don't have to go to the trouble of doing it myself. What's the point of any hobby? I can look at pictures of outside, I don't have to actually go outside. I can look at pictures of parks and mountains and ocean, I don't actually have to go to any of those places. I could just sit at the house on the internet all day and eat chips and never do anything because everybody's already done it. But that's not as much fun. It's fun, it's interesting, it's challenging to get some of this information from the satellites. I'm increasing my knowledge about radio, about space, about science. I'm learning stuff as I do these videos. As I tell everybody, I am not an expert. I don't know everything about satellites. I don't know the best way to do this stuff. I stumble my way through a lot of the techniques, a lot of the software, and I make a lot of mistakes along the way. And I try to learn from those mistakes. So. Yeah, again, it's a learning experience, it's fun, it's a hobby. Maybe it doesn't have a practical point, but I enjoy it. Anyway, we're gonna wrap up this video. I've babbled enough, I've messed around with antennas enough, it's been all weekend. I was trying to get this one done a little bit sooner than some of my other videos, so I'm not just releasing it weeks after I film it. So we might just put it out today. We'll have to see where we're at with the editing. Check out my other videos for more satellite experiments, uh, amateur radio experiments, all kinds of silly nonsense, and then of course all my usual content like boats duct taped together, railroad vehicles, DIY projects, fixing stuff from the trash, all that sort of good thing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.